Good day folks, this is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. We're not at Green Pastures Farm today. Uh, we're actually in Tennessee and I got some special guests here. And this is Kimber Kimberly and Gerard? Gerald. Gerald. And your last name? Brindle. Brindle. And uh, would you tell me a little bit about where you're from and what brought you to this conference? We're at the, uh, by the way, the uh, Regenerative uh, Grazing Summit here in Greenville, Tennessee. And uh, we had a good conversation while ago and I was intrigued by this young couple and so I wanted to get a little more info. Yeah, so we're from the uh, north central Piedmont of North Carolina, uh, north of Greensboro. And our, our journey started about, uh, well, many years ago actually to get here, but we bought our farm about uh, four years ago and we've been working steadily on it and, and we became so infatuated with regenerative agriculture. And, and I was telling Greg earlier that I've seen all of his videos, so <laughs> I've learned so much from him and his videos. And I think I was subscriber number 400 or something like that early on. You were but, you were a pioneer. A pioneer, that's right. <laughs> uh, so we, you know, now we're to the point where um, we're looking to actually start the farm. You know, we've mm -hmm. been cleaning up. We, we bought this farm that was 40 or 50 years old. Many, many layers of fence on the ground and in the trees and everywhere else. Yep. Uh, the pond's in bad shape, all of this stuff. So now we're at the point where we want to start the fencing and the watering and the livestock and really get down to farming. And we want to be stewards of the land. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it, we're it really can be excited. It can be overwhelming, you know, when you first start out. And, and Kimberly, you were talking about earlier, uh, you could tell when uh, your husband was listening to my channel and you finally said, I know I could tell by your voice, you know, you walked in the kitchen, here's this guy over here listening to the channel. Yes. I was like, are you talking to Greg? Are you listening to Greg again? <laughs> so, sometimes I do talk to Greg. But <laughs> Kimberly, you're, you're from the financial background. You're, are you in accounting? Is that what you said? Or? Uh, I'm in operations finance. And operations finance. And so I understood that your comment, it, it hit me right in the heart. It's like, I don't want to, you know, we've, we've worked our whole life. And we don't want to necessarily just throw away money at things that we don't want to be throwing away. So you, you want your farm to be profitable exactly and enjoyable. Right. That's exactly right. Yep. We want to make sure we're good stewards of the land, that we spend our money wisely, and we make good decisions on how we spend that money, which is one of the reasons that we're here. We're yes. trying to get as much information, as much knowledge from the folks who have, have lived it. They've studied the science, but they've also lived it and they've experienced. And we want to learn from their mistakes, Yep. Steal their ideas if they'll let us steal them. Well, I was that. telling you earlier, uh, I noticed you were taking notes. You were on the front table up there, and you were writing down notes like a schoolgirl in sixth grade. <laughs> and I'm like, that's, that's good. I'm serious, folks. When you all come to conferences, and for you, those of you all watching this video, if you go to a conference, make sure you bring a notepad. Don't just sit there all day and listen. Because when you get home, you go, wait a minute, what did he say? Or You, you just can't remember it all. And if you write it down, you can go back to that. It's a very precious notebook. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I have, I've already referred to my notes. Yeah, <laughs> I've not even finished the conference. Yeah, that's right. And, and so, being a mathematics major, she's very attentive to detail. So, and I didn't ask you what what did you do, or what do you do, or what did, what did you do in your career? Are you, you retired know, now? No, I'm not. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm actually in IT now. So I came out of finance and and converted over into the IT world. So that's okay. that's what I'm in now. Gotcha. And we both still have day jobs, so, you know, every other uh, waking hour is spent to the farm. Yeah. Weekends, vacations, evenings, whatever it takes. Uh, we're, we're really studying, We're on working. vacation. We're on vacation right now. How, yeah, how old are you all, if you uh, don't mind me asking? How we're both old? above 50. Okay. Yeah. You're young. You're, you're very young. So, you have plenty of time. You still got good energy. Yeah. Uh, you know, I did it, folks. I'm, I worked till I was 50 in town. I quit my job. But while I had that off-farm job, I used that as an advantage to leverage my time on the farm. So I understand where you're coming from. You're using your vacation. I, at the end, when I quit, I had six weeks vacation. Every single week that I took, it was something to do with the farm or going to a conference. Yeah. Watch I, I think that's I think that's part of the story. You know, when I first you got started a bee watching on your, you. Watch it. Don't let that thing sting you. <laughs> so, so when we. Uh, when I first started watching your videos, that's actually one of the things that was very attractive to your channel was um, your story. You yeah. Know? And, and you talk about how you were almost bankrupt at one point. Yes. And, and lose, potentially losing the family farm. And 
and, and it was such an attractive story. And, and, and I worked, you know, you, you were saying you worked all the time in town, and then you'd go out at nighttime or weekends or yes. vacations. And we're living the same thing. Mm -hmm. And and that's uh, so so we have a lot. We have a. Uh, Kindred souls, I guess. You yep, know, in, in that's life. awesome. That's awesome. Well, proof it can be done. Exactly. I tell you what, folks, if you write down a list of goals, you've got a farm to work on. So write down a list of goals and start doing little things around that farm. And every day, it's like climbing a ladder. You're one rung closer to your goal. And it's so rewarding to check that goal off when you reach it. Yes, it and, and put another one back on there. As you complete that list, keep Here's adding. It, yeah, keep adding them. <laughs> Usually it's ten grand. There you go. Well, <laughs> you know what? That's good. That's good. That's good. You always want to have a goal to work toward. But I tell you, I I think you all will do well. You're both very focused. You're business minded, and I think the worst mistake that you can make is to jump into this journey and not have an idea where you're going. But you all have off farm income, so use that as a tool. And everybody, oh, they work in town, and, you know, they're never going to get there. Yeah, it's great to have that off-farm job. I, I get concerned about young people today that just want to jump right into it, and they got all this debt around their neck, and how are you going to make that work? Yeah. So you, this is, I think you all are positioned really well. We hope and, so. You know, you're going to make some mistakes. You really will. And what you're trying to do is not to make the same mistake twice. And so my recommendation to you all would be when you start out, don't go out here and buy 40, 50 cows and just have a wreck. Start with a few. And it may, maybe it's not cows. Maybe you want to do chickens or, or sheep or whatever. But start with a few. Learn, learn uh, you know, all the ins and outs of the business and then get good at it before you add that next enterprise. So right. I know you talked about chickens. And that's fine if you want to do chickens at the start. But don't try and do three. Right. Because yeah, you know what'll happen? It'll all be a wreck. Yeah. It'll all be a wreck. So make sure you get one down real well and then add the next one. But and so you all right on the border of North Carolina and Virginia. That's correct. We're less than a mile from Virginia. That's some pretty country in there. It's beautiful. I've been in there. I've done a few conferences that way. It's, you know what? You all are in the what they call the food hub of the East Coast right there. That try. What are those three uh, big towns? There's um, Raleigh. Raleigh. Greensboro, uh, and I don't really know. it's Raleigh Durham. Yeah, that's and, it. And Raleigh Durham and well, I had a good friend there that uh, really big into this, and I couldn't believe it. We went to the farmers markets and these restaurants, and it was all locally sourced food. So you're on kind of the foodie area there. Yeah. So you'll have a good market there for we your love our food. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, I think we have a food issue in the United States. Everybody's talking about cheap food. Well, if you eat cheap food, what's your body going to respond to? Yeah, that's you know? true. That's exactly right. That's right. So, well, I want to thank you all. We want to. I just uh, I saw y'all. I thought we. Uh, I thought it was unique that you all just getting started, and to give you the ideas and kind of your backdrop on that. So I appreciate it. Thank you both, and uh, I'm going to sign off here. Everyone, hit that subscribe button on the way out. We will see you next time.